Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mo Jackson. and today we are talking about a topic which seems to be coming up more and more. I am hearing from my colleagues and from my friends and from people like Spider Tech. I saw he posted on Twitter recently about this as well. It's people who are normally Serato DJ Pro users and they want to do a gig playing off USB sticks or an SD card in CDJs standalone with no computer. Now there could be a number of different reasons why you'd want to do that. Not to say that Serato is kind of falling off in any way, but it may be you're playing somewhere outdoors incredibly hot and your laptop can't handle the heat. That is something I'm seeing more and more. It may be that you're playing in the middle of a big lineup of DJs, you're only doing maybe a 45 minute or a one hour set and you don't want to be that guy or girl who starts pulling out all the cables and rearranging the booth just to do your 45 minutes. So it makes more sense to kind of go with the flow and play off USB. But of course, you know, building a library in Rekordbox from scratch is a bit of a pain. And so people are looking at ways that they can transfer their cue points and grids, etc., all their crates from Serato DJ Pro into Rekordbox without too much fuss. And today we're going to talk about the method which I think is the most affordable and the most straightforward. When it comes to converting data between different DJ apps, the first name that comes to mind for many is Record Buddy, which is now sadly defunct and no longer available. There's another one out there today which seems to work in a similar fashion, Lexicon. That is an all-singing, all-dancing tool which does management of your master library as well as conversion jobs. I will be testing that soon, but there is one potential issue, especially for DJs who don't need the bigger feature set. It is a subscription-based app starting at $15 a month. For those who only need conversion features, Features, and maybe only occasionally, that could be a big ask. So instead, today we're looking at DJ Conversion Utility, or DJCU, from the company and the Groove Remains, headed up by Mixmaster G in the Netherlands. This video is only going to focus on the task in hand, converting Serato to Rekordbox, but the app does a whole lot more, also transferring data between Tractor, Algorithms DJ and Virtual DJ back and forth. Denon users will need an extra bit of software, the Denon conversion utility, but they can get involved too. That's obviously far too much to cover in one video, but you should check out Mixmaster G's YouTube channel where he goes into much detail on all of his products and does regular AMA sessions. Before I start the demo, let's talk price. DJ Conversion Utility is €19.50, which at the time of making this video is about the same in dollars, and it's a one-time purchase, no ongoing subscription. And that is a big factor in why I like the app so much, to be honest. We all have so many subscriptions going out for so much stuff these days, it's quite refreshing just to buy an app and then own it. One final thing to note, DJCU is Mac only, and I suspect it will always be that way, as Mixmaster G is a Mac developer. As someone who uses is a Windows laptop for DJing. That is a slight hassle for me, but I do have Macs in my life still, so I can make it work. But that's just something to be very clear about. This software is just for the Apple people. And with that, let's get on to the demo. So my first attempt at making this video, I installed the application and went through all the hoops that you have to jump through, like the accessibility panels, the security stuff, etc. It is a bit fiddly. It's not difficult but it did make for a very long, excessively long video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna show you how to do this conversion from Serato DJ Pro to Rekordbox with DJ Conversion Utility, just it's already installed. So if you wanna know how to do it, Mixmaster G has lots of great tutorials to show you how to install it and everything else. But in my case now, we are literally just gonna show you the conversion process. So let me show you what we're starting with. First of all, we have my Serato DJ Pro library. It's not my full library. This is just a demo library that I've put together. So I have a few crates of different genres, different kinds of stuff in there. One particular one, one track I'm going to show you later. And we've got a smart crate there as well. So that's my library. Could be your Serato library. You've got your cue points set in there. You've got your, um, your saved loops. Anything like that is all going to be in there, all ready to go. So that's what we're going to begin with. And then record box, it can be, if you don't use record box already, it can be an entirely empty record box library. The only thing it needs to have in it is one audio track from your local drive. So in my case, this track I've just dragged in from my local drive and it's I've analyzed it in there. You also need to make sure that in record box you have your settings so that you don't auto analyze. So the auto analysis must be disabled and you need to turn off the analysis for BPM and key. We're only going to do phrase. The reason for that is that you're importing 
that data, the BPM and key, the grid, etc., you're going to be importing that from Serato. So what you don't want to do is open up Record Box and suddenly Record Box has got these tracks imported and it starts to overwrite that data which you've just spent time transferring over. So that now is ready to go. It's not going to auto analyze when the tracks go in. So I'm going to close these down and we're going to start the process. So the application is now open. When you open it up, it will check what versions you have of everything installed. And obviously, I would recommend that you do go with Rekordbox 6. Don't mess around with the older versions. If you want to play off USB sticks or SD cards, yeah, it needs to be the latest Rekordbox 6 for the best results. As you can see, it will work with lots of different software, Tractor, Rekordbox, DJ, Virtual DJ. But in this video, we are just focusing on this conversion for Serato users to go to Rekordbox for those gigs. And so let's have a look. We've got queues and loops. These are the options that we've got, right? So you can queues and loops to record box, hot queues and memory banks. Now record box has these two sets of queues. Effectively, it's got hot queues and it has memory queues and a memory queue is something it will jump to and pause. Whereas a hot queue is something you press and it will jump to it and continue playing. So that's the way that this will actually set lay those out can vary and I would suggest that it, it would be quite wise to try a few tracks and see how you prefer it. You might have a, a certain way of working with your cues inside Serato DJ Pro which will mean you prefer it in a slightly different way on here. Typically I just go cues and loops mixed in one row hot and memory bank set identical up to their maximum capacity. That's the way I tend to do it. It just it works for me. It's a smooth transition. Then we've got the advanced selection method. So you can choose tracks that have just been added recently. Of course, we're starting fresh here, so no need to do that. But if you've just added in stuff in the past couple of days, for example, set it for a couple of days ago, and it will only import the stuff that's been added to your Serato library recently. Compensate for MP3 and Q and loop shifts. This is very important. I don't know why you would not want that turned on. Basically, MP3s, every bit of software, sets the cue points in a slightly different way and this will do automatic compensation to make sure they're in the right place according to the grids in the software that you're going to. Windows conversion, I'm guessing most people using this will just be on a Mac, but it can set up for a record box Windows library if needed. Smart placement in the hot bank divides a track into eight segments representing the hot cue positions. Each one is stored to a pad representing its position on the track. So what it's doing, this is basically moving them in terms of chronological order around the track. Now, I don't have that one generally turned on. You may prefer it, you may not. Of course, it's worth experimenting with. Fix mixed in key cue bug. If you use mixed in key and it's set cues in a certain way, then there can be a bug with that. So if you've analyzed and set cues with uh, mixed in key, then you probably want to turn that on. And then this is the one that we are definitely going to need on here. The tool XML to record box six after conversion. This is the tool that is installed with DJ Conversion Utility and will automatically go from the, you know, the XML that we're creating, which is like a, a big bundle of data, and it will convert that straight into Rekordbox 6 library. So we want that in this case because that is the job we're here to do. So now I'm going to hit Start Conversion, and then it's going to give us the options. Now, there's one thing I will point out here is that we don't have my Smart Crate that I had in my Serato library. This software does not support smart crates. It only works with your actual crates. So if there are smart crates, and I have absolutely tons of smart crates in my main Serato library. So what you would want to do is basically create dummy crates of those. So click a regular, you know, create a regular crate, drag the tracks from your smart crate into that. Even if it's just a temporary measure whilst you do your conversion over, you will need to do that because that is not available there. Now, I'm just going to convert a couple here. I'm going to do the DJ City House and I'm going to do the loop one, which is a good demo. So I'm going to hold down command and I, oh, we can do them all at once. But, you know, that will take a fairly long time. So we're just going to do two crates here right now and we're going to click OK and off it goes. So we've still got nearly a thousand tracks there. So I'm going to let this run and I'll come back to you in a second. Right, so that's finishing up 98, 99% and there we go. Now it's generating the playlist from my Serato playlist. So you can see this is all just automated. It just does it itself. And that's why this tool is, is so straightforward, really. Once you've got the initial install set up, it really is very, very simple to do. So now it's going to open up the XML to Record Box 6 application. 
And now it's going to check the installed record box. And then it's going to go through and it's creating a backup. It always backs up everything it does, which is really good. And now it's going to convert to record box into the collection itself. That again, is going to take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause and come back to you again. So I'm just restarting here at 85%. There's 800, just over 100 still to go. So you can see in real time how quickly it's going. I mean, the thing is, if you want to transfer and convert your entire Serato DJ Pro library, if you have a massive library with, you know, 10,000 or more files in it, you know, 20,000 files or something, that's going to take a while. You're going to have to set aside a little bit of time to do it. But if you are just transferring a few key crates that you need to perform with at a certain gig, you know, a couple of thousand files, it's not a massive undertaking in terms of time. It is there. You can see it's going up, you know, one at a time. And it will get there. But you can do your whole library if needed. And perhaps you might want to do that just as a one-time thing and then gradually update it over time. That's certainly something that, you know, that'll be much quicker to do. You'll only be doing tracks that have been modified in the recent days or whatever. But yeah, it can be done with a whole library. But I think most DJs, certainly the ones who I speak to are asking me about this process, are ones who just typically want a few of their power crates that they need for a certain gig that they've got set up then yeah it's going to be a very quick job to do this transfer every time not a problem really at all now the other thing is we will need to analyze them in record box at the other end so again that's going to lengthen the time it takes but the actual conversion process as you see really not taking a very long time at all okay so now that's all done it takes like a minute and a half or something then to open up you're going to open up record box we're not going to you can see a log of what's been done and everything else we're not going to do that we are just going to open it's going to open up record box and now you can see we have my 969 tracks or 968 tracks that i've just added in there are all now inside the record box library as well as the playlist that came in so we have a, a couple of playlist folders over here we have xml to record box 6 this is stuff that's been added to the record box 6 collection in the most recent conversion so in my case it's all of these and then we have the selected Serato crates. We open up and there's my two crates there. So I'm just going to show you because we turned off auto analysis, which is, as I said, is very important. I'm just going to show you when I do a few tracks there, we're going to right click. I'm going to hit analyze tracks and making sure that BPM and key are unticked. We just want phrase ticked because now it's going to analyze only the stuff we want, the beat grids. The key, um, the key as well, that's all coming in from Serato DJ Pro. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to analyze those. And as you can see, as it begins to analyze, up come the waveforms with our Serato DJ Pro cue points there. And so you can see it's, it's done its job. It's done what it's supposed to do very, very nicely indeed. So let's go in. We'll just take a look. So if we load up, all of these are, are tracks from DJ City. So they all come with the first cue point in there in Serato. And as you can see, they're there. Beat grids, looking good. Generally, you will find the grids are there. There's a couple of tracks here that I've noticed don't have grids. Now, whether that's a, uh, a problem with DJ Conversion Utility or with the grid itself in Serato DJ Pro, I don't know. But you can see the vast majority have got their grids there. And they've also got their cue points all coming up and just fine so that one again no grid there if we go to the grid it's got nothing there so what i'd want to do probably with that one let's eject that and let's just analyze that one inside record box i mean i think for a lot of djs and you can correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i think for a lot of djs the main purpose of doing this exercise is to get your crates and your cue points in there because you've got those cue points all set so it's worth checking that the beat grids are correct. So now we have a beat grid on that one. Easily done. And you may just find that, yep, yeah, there's the odd one here and there. That's actually something I've not really seen that much before is missing grids. But I have seen one there. So, yeah. But otherwise, look, they're all there. They've all got the grids and they've all got their cue points. So I just want to show you what it looks like when you've got lots of cues and loops in a track. So this one, I know I've got four cue points and I've got four saved loops. So in this case, it's brought in the cue points. So there's my hot cues, saved loop. The first one, C is a hot cue, saved loop, E, hot cue, and a saved loop. 
and so it spread those out across all the hot cues shared between the cues and the loops and this is one thing if you're a serato dj pro user you might actually find that you quite like having these uh, saved loops on cue points it's certainly a feature that i do really like in record box it's not a separate thing they're just in there then you also have them in the memory cues as well now you notice when i click on one of those it jumps to it but it doesn't play and that's the same on the cdjs or on an xdj as well a memory cue it will jump to it and cue there it won't just jump there and play from that point so that's just something to bear in mind one little extra tip though is that when you've got a saved loop you can actually have if you click the set active loop there so click onto that that will turn red and then that is an active loop and so when you get there and you load up this track so now i'm going to come out of here load it again play the track and as soon as i get to that point the loop becomes active to feature that i really like again inside record box and uh, something i might do a video about at some point in the future active loops i think are a fantastic feature but yeah you may not want to do that that might confuse you coming from serato dj pro if you're not habitually a record box user you may need you may want to leave that alone but in my case i really like that feature but as you can see all of those save loops as well it's not just the cues those save loops are in there as well it's just that they are on cues they're on hot cues or memory cues rather than save to a separate saved loop bank as they are in Serato DJ Pro. But you can see it's all done. And so we can go in, right click, analyze tracks, analyze them all just with phrase. And that way all of that information is going to come in, all the beat grids will come in. And then we have our crates here. So at the moment they're in this folder called selected Serato crates, but I can drag them out of there to the main tree and just have those as my main ones. And I can also delete this folder once I've finished with it. I can delete this folder, can delete this folder, etc. So you can see it's been a very straightforward thing. It's not necessarily the fastest thing in the world if you want to do thousands of tracks, but it's a lot quicker than analyzing all the files in record box and doing your cue points all over again. If you don't have to, you know, if you don't need to do that, just bring them in from Serato. It can save you a lot of time. And I just think the whole process is pretty smooth and pretty straightforward to do. So there you go, that is how you transfer your Serato DJ Pro crates, cues and loops over to Rekordbox with the absolute minimum amount of fuss thanks to DJ Conversion Utility. Now of course we've barely scratched the surface of what this application can do. It works with all these different software platforms, you can go back and forth between them, plus there are additional supplementary apps like this stuff for Denon DJ gear and there is DJ Conversion Utility Streaming which I've also played with. That lets me analyze beat source tracks inside serato dj pro set beat grids set cue points and then transfer that metadata over to other platforms as well that one i will definitely return to at some point in the future but in the meantime if you want to know more mixmaster g has hours upon hours of content on his youtube channel talking you through all of the ins and outs all of the details on how his software works and yeah i do thoroughly recommend it in general but for this particular job serato dj pro to record box if you need that for performance reasons yeah i can't recommend dj conversion utility enough it absolutely does a great job now i'd love to hear from you guys and girls in the comments below if you work with multiple bits of dj software how do you manage those multiple libraries are you doing things manually like i used to do for the longest time i just had two parallel libraries running in the same way do you use um, itunes or something like that as a bridge or do you use a bit of software like DJ Conversion Utility or some of the competing products out there? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so sound off in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.